everybody. It's 8.06, April 9th. God bless everybody. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, I just got to putting in a few other seeds that I had from last year. Uh, some cantaloupe and a couple of watermelon seeds. We'll see if those come out. I hope they do. I might pick me up some watermelon seeds here in a little bit. Anyhow, put a bunch of cantaloupe there. Something should come up out of it. We're going to grow a little bit of a garden anyhow, just in case. Uh, uh, you know, something comes up. Who knows? You know, and then even if she should be leaving, you know, it doesn't hurt to leave something if it's going to grow. We know God can destroy a crop you know, instantly, but uh, we're gonna try to grow something anyhow. All right, you guys. My main thing is, you guys, I like to try to keep everybody informed and warned about, because it says in the last days, wolves will enter in among you, and they're gonna try to deceive everybody. And even about being hyper, anxious, uh, People that are nothing but grace, 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 wanting to pump that in, like get you to think that's all that it is, nothing else, man. And we know that it says Satan makes war with those who keep the commandments of God and our testimonies of Jesus Christ. We also know where Jesus says, I will liken you to a wise person who hears my sayings and does them, you know, who built upon a rock versus those that are saying, um, you know, grace and faith and nothing else, man, nothing, you know? You guys, those same people that are saying that, they're not warning you any scriptures whatsoever. Stop and think, why wouldn't they warn you any type of scriptures? The reason why they won't warn you is because they don't want you to start looking. They would prefer to have you all hyped up, super anxious, excited about um, rapture, rapture, you know? When the enemy, you listen, he's not gonna stop until we're gone, until the timing of the rapture. He is not gonna stop trying to deceive people. And that's why I see some of these people, and you guys heard me go over some of these people before, and they're very real, and they're, uh, the enemy's very real. Remember, it says Satan comes as an angel of light, and his ministers as righteousness. So they're gonna come, what do you think they're gonna look like? They're gonna be very serious. You guys, it says, um, you know, be not anxious and don't be, um, let your joy be turned into mourning, your laughter to sorrow, you know? You, you, this is how you can tell who's who that's around you. We are, you guys, there's nothing easy about this. It hasn't been. I know ever since my calling came in, man, I've had nothing but attacks, constantly attacking me, you know? <clears throat> and then you listen to some of these other people, which I don't. I've heard them, I've had people send me some of the things that they've said, and it's like, just, it's like, wow, you know? All right, listen to this, Romans 12, 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Okay. For I say, though the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. For, for as we have many members in one body, and all members are not the same office, so we being many members are one body in Christ, and every one member one of another. Now have you noticed a lot of these guys that you see out there, they're teaching you in scripture. They're teaching you and they're, um, they're 
they're they're helping you to learn and understand scripture. They're not going, hey, faith and grace and nothing else. That's not teaching you. That's deceiving you. You know, you got to be careful of this. There's people out there that are really trying to teach it and get you to be cautious versus those that are trying to get you to be anxious, excited, rapture any time. Well, look, we're still here, aren't we? We're seeing a lot of things happening, aren't we? Government setting up things. I mean, you, you go to Venezuela, uh, Guatemala police, man. They were going down the streets preaching the Bible. I seen it in a video this morning. It's probably on my uh, search. If you look on my search list on here, the videos that I've watched, you'll see one in there where Guatemala police were going down the streets with loudspeakers preaching scriptures. They know some, some of these your smaller countries that fear God, they're going to be doing this. They know what's going on. You know? All right, 1 John 5, 19. If you look at um, um, Venezuela, they were all about partying, very lustful living, and I'm not saying everybody like that there, but a lot of it was. It was like it was like drugs and party and sex. Well, five years ago, it started. It got hit hard, where uh, they started having food shortages, like you're seeing here right now, in the grocery stores. And then their money collapsed, went bankrupt. Now they got $100 bills of Venezuelan money out on the streets, worthless. And they killed all their pets, ate all their animals, um, went to the zoo, ate the animals in the zoo. Okay. It's coming here, you guys. It's getting, it's getting worse everywhere. And guess what? Everybody's still here, aren't they? Yes. And we, we won't go through it, but we come out of it. What does scripture say? Don't be ignorant about this, man. It says, who are these people? These are those who made themselves ready, and they came out of great tribulation. Came out of it. You know, you guys, in scriptures, you're going to see everybody goes through things in there. You know, they're, they go through trials. Tribulation. There's always going to be tribulation in this world. We're going to go through things. Okay? But we're not appointed to the wrath. It doesn't say you're not going to be seeing things. It just says you're not appointed to the wrath. You know? 1 John 5, 19. And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. And the Son of God, He has come, and He has given us an understanding. And we know that the Son of God, oh, He's given us an understanding that we may know Him that is true, and we are in Him that is true, even in His Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God, the eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. We are abiding in Him. Don't forget this. We're abiding in Him. Don't have a fear of any of these things. Not only that, we should, you shouldn't love your life here anyhow. I don't. I mean, just because I'm out there trying to plant a few things in the garden doesn't mean I'm getting excited about this here. I'm not. I want out of this place, man. It's wicked. <coughs> Militaries, <coughs> it's going to get worse. You guys are going to see it every day. And when the time comes for us to go, when the time comes for us to go, we'll be gone. But until we go, you need to be um, as wise as a serpent, but gentle as doves. Wise as a serpent, but gentle as a dove. Okay? This is real and it's going on, man. First John chapter 2, my little children, I write unto you these things that you sin not. If any man sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He's a prohibition for our sins, not for ours only, but for also for the whole sins of the world. Hereby we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that says, I know him and keepeth not his commandments, he's a liar. Faith and grace and nothing else. And the truth is not in him. 
But whoso keepeth his word in him, verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. This is very real, you guys. I started, I tried to put something together, man. It's just, I end up going way over. Because, I mean, you get into scriptures, man, and it's just filled with this. It's filled with it, man. All right, you guys, we are predestined for this time. You have an anointing that comes from the Most High. That's why you see what you see. Look at how many people you try to share it with, and they're like, you know, they, they don't understand what you're saying. I'm talking most of the world. They can't understand it, but you know. All right, James 1, 27. Pure religion, undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction. Keep himself unspotted from the world. You hear that? From the world. James chapter 4, 1 through 4. Listen to this. From, from where wars come from, fighting among you, come they not hence, even of your lust that war in your members. Okay, you lust and you have not. You kill and desires to have and you cannot obtain. You fight uh, and war and yet you have not because you ask not. The Lord provides everything for us, man. When you do what is right, he even makes your enemies flee from you. You guys, even now, right now, be separate from this world and you are pre destined and chosen for this time the enemy knows this that's why he's trying hard to get you to believe the lies try to think that it's okay to sin and it's not yes we have an advocate you can repent but I mean if you've been separated and you know that this is evil and you know sin is evil uh, and you're still of the world then you're in trouble you know, then you're, you haven't let go. And if you haven't let go, then I would say that's pretty foolish. I'm not calling anybody a fool. I'm just saying it would be pretty foolish to still be holding on to this when uh, we clearly we see, we see what's getting ready to happen. Okay. All right, you ask and you receive not because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lust. You adulterers and adulteresses, <clears throat> know you not that the friendship of the world is an amenity with God? Whoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil. He will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, double-minded. Be afflicted, mourn, weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy into heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. 2 Corinthians 6.17 Wherefore, come out from among them. Be separate, says the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. In other words, you guys, we can't be equally, unequally yoked with unbelievers right now. I mean, yeah, he didn't open your eyes to sit there and hang out with these people that are still very worldly. We're to warn them, to tell them, you know. This guy here that came and cut the lawn here, I told him, since I've known him, probably a year and a half or better now, since I've known him, He's only heard me saying one thing, and that's the time is up here. That the judgment of God is coming on this place. He hasn't heard me worldly talking around him, never. He was here yesterday evening. This is all I talk about to him. You know, and I told him, you better be ready. And he's, he's one of those people that'll say, you know, oh, if you just believe, and all you got to do is believe, and you're saved by faith alone, man. I'm going, no, you need to, we're going to, we're, I've been trying to work with them on scriptures, telling it to them, but the world, it pulls them back in, chokes it out, you know, that's what's happened to most people around here, that's why it says many were called, 
but few were chosen. Oh yeah, they see something's not up, you know, they see it. But they're still holding on here, you know, just in case. 2 Corinthians 10, 4, 6. For our weapons are not, for our weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal. They're mighty through God to pulling down strongholds, casting down the imaginations, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. When your obedience is fulfilled. Acts 20, 29. For I know this, that after my departing, grievous wolves will enter in among you, not sparing the flock, also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. After them. There's a lot of them out there. That's why I say OSAS. It's filled with it, man. Satan's had all this time, man, to raise up disciples after them. Why do you think the judgment of God's coming? Because they've done it. They've literally done it. He's opened our eyes, some of us, to see and then even those of us that can see, you guys know what it's been like to try to tell people what we know. You know, they don't want to hear it. Or they don't believe it. Or they think we're, you know, you're trying to or do works. You know, it's clear Satan's coming after us. Why? Because we're keeping the commandments of God and our testimony of Jesus Christ. What Jesus did on the cross. Yes, he's washed away our sins all our past and present sins. It doesn't say, you know, it says if you take pleasure in it, he'll send you strong delusions. You know, that they believe the lies. They, took, they, they believe not the truth, but took pleasure in unrighteousness. <coughs> Make no mistakes, you guys. These guys, what you're going to hear them saying is faith and grace and nothing else. If it doesn't sound like they're keep, they're wanting to keep the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ, you got your answer. You are you sh you already know who they are. So why are you going to spend five more minutes listening to people like that that aren't want, saying, telling people to keep the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ? Because that's what it says in Revelation twelve seventeen that that's who Satan's coming after. It's not coming after those that aren't doing that. Listen to this. Is Satan divided? What did Jesus say? No, he's not divided. Okay? Satan's not going to warn you about anything in scriptures. Because it could cause you to start studying scripture. He doesn't want that. He doesn't want you to start studying scripture. Because then you're going to start learning his devices. And what they're really doing. No, he's going to lead many people astray. That's what he's done already. All right, you guys. God bless you. I love each and every one of you. And I hope and pray that you receive a message on it. Last night I had a dream um, where we landed a huge plane, like in the big streets of New York, because the, the blocks are so far apart. When we landed, I was looking at the ends to see if the wings were going to hit the buildings on either side, because it was a huge plane. Anybody that's been in New York, you see how wide the streets are. Well, we landed in there, and then when I got out of the plane to start walking, I kept wanting to float up, wanting to float up. You know, it was hard for me to try to walk because I just kept wanting to float up, like leave, you know? That's all that was, just kept doing that a lot. Anyhow, don't have a spirit of fear, you guys, when you see whatever it is that you're seeing coming, okay? Don't have a spirit of fear. Remember, greater is he that is in you than what is in the world. We've got a light in us. That's why we see. Don't forget that. God bless you guys. I love you. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.